One of the biggest ancient archaeological mysteries involves some of the biggest quarried stones from the ancient world at the ruins of the Temple of Jupiter at Baalbek in modern-day Lebanon. There are six megalithic stones at the site, and one of them is actually said to be the largest known quarried stone in the world. Three of the stones actually form part of the structure of the temple itself and are referred to as the Trilithon stones, while the other three are outside of the temple. It's not known when the temple was built, it's just known that it is from Roman times and dedicated to their god Jupiter. The ruins of the temple can be seen today, or at least the upper portions of it, and were likely built on top of an earlier structure. The question is, who quarried the large megalithic stones at the site, and more specifically, who placed the three Trilithon stones on the temple structure itself? So I guess you could say there is at least two schools of thought here. The mainstream archaeological perspective would probably say construction started somewhere just before the time of the birth of Christ and then took several decades to complete. It was entirely built by the Romans. An alternative view would suggest that the lower portions of the site, including the large Trilithon stones, were built by an earlier lost advanced civilization and the Romans just came and built on top of it. I'm kind of somewhere on the fence with this one. I've seen some ancient structures and ruins around the world that don't seem to fit with the tools or architectural knowledge of the people they are associated with. You know, like how did the ancient Egyptians build the pyramid with copper tools that aren't feasible for chiseling granite, for example? But on the other hand, I don't know if that is necessarily an issue here. The stones at the Temple of Jupiter are limestone, which aren't as hard as granite, and the Romans did have tools that would cut limestone. So how they cut the stones isn't necessarily a mystery here. How they move the stones is a mystery, though. They outweigh hundreds of tons with the ones outside the temple, known as the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, the Stone of the South, and the Forgotten Stone, all weigh more than a thousand tons with the Forgotten Stone estimated to be over 1,600 tons. Moving any of these stones would have been a difficult undertaking for any known society, pretty much any time in history, and even today would be difficult, too. So how'd they do it? I think this is where the alternative view that a lost advanced civilization must have done it comes in as a way to explain it. But in this particular instance, I don't know if we need that explanation. I haven't been to this site myself, but my understanding is the quarry used for these stones is near the temple and a little uphill from it. So if the quarry was uphill from the temple, the builders would have already had a little bit of gravity working on their side to move it. It's still a mystery because a slight gravity advantage alone wouldn't have been enough to move these stones. Maybe they rolled them or used some method of digging out the ground under it and shifting it back and forth, or maybe they used a system of cranes. The cranes Romans are known to have used at the time would not have been strong enough to move these blocks. But considering they understood how cranes work, I don't think it's far-fetched to think they could have just built a bigger crane for this purpose and the remains of that crane just have never been found. Or maybe they used a series of cranes together in tandem. Anyway, with all that said, I think the Romans may have had the manpower and technical know-how to do this. What's more of a mystery to me here is if the Romans built it, why didn't they write down how they did it? The Romans kept lots of records and wrote a lot of things down. There must have been a lot of people involved in building this site. None of them bothered to mention when they built it or how they built it? I think some people get caught up in the question of how they built it. But I think there is a bigger question here. Why? What is even the point? Never mind if it was the Romans or some lost advanced civilization who cut and moved these stones. What was the point of using stones this large in the first place? I mean, these stones are ultra-megaliths. Why would they want to use stones so large in the first place? At least with other ancient structures like the pyramids, they used megalithic stones that were more consistent in size. The Temple of Jupiter has stones of varying size used on it, but the Trilithon stones are way larger than the rest and they aren't even at the bottom level foundation. It wouldn't seem as strange to me if they were the bottom level foundation. But no, they built the foundation with several layers of smaller blocks, then tossed three ultra-megalithic stones on top of those layers, and then just kept on going add more layers with smaller blocks. Like, what is even the point of putting these three ultra-megaliths at that specific layer? Even if the Trilithon stones and the stones below it were built by an earlier civilization and the Romans just built on top of that, same question applies. Why did the earlier civilization build the first several layers with smaller blocks and put the Trilithon stones on that specific layer? It just seems so random. 
How did that conversation go between the priest of Jupiter or whoever ordered the construction and the architect go? What did he say? I need you to build me a temple and put three ultra megaliths at the sixth or seventh layer of the wall or somewhere in there. And then leave three more even bigger ones just lying around. I mean, it doesn't really matter if this was built by the Romans or another civilization. Even if this had been built yesterday, I would still ask the same question. Why put the largest carved stones at a seemingly random spot in the wall? So I don't know what the point of using those three stones was. If I had to guess what happened with the others, my guess would be that after placing the first three, they realized the next two even larger stones they cut were just too large to move. And then they just gave up on finishing the third one altogether. I still don't know why they would put the three Trolithon stones in the positions they did though, or why they wanted them that large in the first place. I wonder if anyone has ever tried to find any traces of paint on them before. I wonder if it might have been possible that there was once a painted mural on it and they wanted the mural at that level but didn't want it to have a bunch of creases in it. So they limited the number of creases by using larger stones. That's just a guess. I don't know if there's any evidence there was paint on them at any point in time. But what do you think? I don't necessarily care who you think built the original structure we see the Trilithon stones in. I'm just curious as to why you think they were put at that specific layer of the building and why they wanted them to be so large. Anyway, those are my thoughts on that. Thanks for listening.